I think we're, we're a few minutes late, but I think we're going to start now. Um, so, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming, and welcome to the AGM um, of the Sussex Branch of Classified Conservation. Um, it's very nice to see some people in real life after quite a long time of not doing that. Um, oh, for people who don't know me, I'm Jess. I am the current chair um, of the branch. This is Tim, who is the current secretary. Um, and there are a few other committee members floating around. <laughs> We've got Dan, who will be giving a talk in a bit. Um, Colin, our treasurer, will be stepping up. And then, I can't see where everyone else is. Bob is, oh yeah, Bob's hiding behind Dan. <laughs> and then there's also um, Kevin, Julia, and Paul at the back there. Excellent. So um, I wanted to say, as you can see, we're attempting to record this because there were quite a few people who didn't want to come in person and we're, we didn't have the technical ability to make it into a hybrid meeting. So we're recording it um, and and then hopefully we'll make it available to members after the event. Um, but it's just me and the, this getting recorded. You guys aren't getting recorded, so you don't have to worry that you're going <laughs> to be surveilled. Um, and in terms of the agenda, so we're going to have the AGM, which will be quite quick. Then Dan's going to give his talk, um, which uh, on his on Corfu Butterfly. Um, project and which I think will be brilliant and then um, we'll have a tea break um, and there's an opportunity for a raffle um, to raise a few funds for the branch which we haven't been able to do for the last um, couple of years um, and then we so on the agenda originally Michael Blenko was going to be giving a little summary talk of um, the kind of branches activities in the year um, unfortunately Michael's had some health problems and he can't be here he's sorry to say. Um, so I will be giving that talk, um, which is mainly made up of information that other people have given me. So I'll do my best to give the talk, um, but I might not be able to answer all of your questions. Um, but there are people here who might be able to. Um, so first of all, I'm going to formally open the AGM. I have to apologise first that you haven't received your newsletter this year. They're stuck at the um, posting house, um, frustratingly. So I do apologise for that. It makes the AGM a bit difficult because obviously you're meant to have been able to see what's in it before you vote on those things. So we're probably going to do things a bit differently um, today. Um, the there's actually not a legal requirement for the Sussex branch to hold an AGM. The, the sort of le the legalities around it are done by the national office at their AGM in terms of um, the finances and things like that. So it's not. I don't think it's a problem for the branch um, in terms of our, our guidelines and things. Um, so the, the only thing that we definitely have to do is um, approve new committee members. Um, but hopefully people will feel comfortable doing that, even though they didn't get pre-warning of it. Um, so, first of all, the first thing is the um, apologies, which I think we've had a couple of. Michael was one, wasn't he? And Griffiths gave her apologies. And, and Griffiths, okay. Um, and then the next thing normally happens is approving the minutes of the last AGM. So I have put a, cop a few copies around um, of the last AGM, which was the online one that we held uh, last November. Um, so if that one I think would be okay to um, approve because it is relatively straightforward unless anybody has any objections to it. So um, if someone wouldn't mind nominating, Bob, I can see you waving it. <laughs> um, and then if someone would second to approve, Dan. Um, and then if um, we'll do a vote, but if you want to abstain, that's fine. So if you vote to approve, you can put your hand up. Enough of us. Are you counting? No. All right. <laughs> it's, no, there's a few. Okay, any, anyone against? Let's see. Anyone abstain? Does anyone abstain? That's the easiest thing for me. Yeah. A few. Oh, okay. One. Okay. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> um, right. Oh, I think I did. Oh, yeah. That's not really. Um, uh, the, so, the, so that's the minute. So then the next thing would be a summary of the 
committee sort of annual um, report, which again is in the newsletter. Um, but I will just give a short summary of some things that have happened this year. So the, the year kind of started with um, trying to find a membership secretary because Sue Knight stepped down after many, many, many years being our membership secretary and doing a really good job at it, um, along with her husband, Colin. Um, so we, we did find someone to replace her, um, a, a really nice lady, but then some things happened in her life that meant she actually didn't take it on in the end. So we had a few months of her being the membership secretary and then she, she wasn't anymore. So then we were in a bit of a pickle, but luckily um, Kevin Crook and his wife stepped forward to take on the job which we were extremely relieved about. So thank you very much. Um, Kevin's already been, was volunteering for the branch, helping Paul out um, with some of his records. Um, so it was really good for them to take on the role. And um, there have been a few um, issues nationally, I think since the pandemic with kind of the, the, off the national membership office kind of um, getting processes back in order um, but I, as far as I'm aware it's all been sorted now and they are sending out welcome letters and things like that so hopefully um, kind of communication with members should improve and we've got um, Kevin and Simone helping us so that's really nice um, we also had a departure of Steve Wheatley the regional conservation officer he left the um, organization in April um, and again he's been here for many years and done a lot of work um, for the Sussex in Sussex with the branch and with the other southeast um, branches. So we were, we were sad to see him go. He's he's gone to Scotland for a bit, um, but he did say he would come and visit and visit the reserves and things. I think he he knows that Sussex. He can't get away from Sussex because it's just too good for butterflies and moths. Um, so. But Steve was replaced by Paul um, Tinsley Marshall, who's the new regional conservation officer. Um, he, he was already involved in the Kent branch, but his job, he worked for um, the Kent Wildlife Trust. Um, and he's, he's been in place for a couple of months now, and um, he seems to be, you know, doing a great job considering he's um, just putting, uh, get, getting to know everything. Um, and he, overall, I mean, there, there have been a few new starters at BC. Um, uh, at, and so at the, at the uh, sort of national organisation, so we've been sort of spending time getting them up to speed. In particular, Neil and Bob um, have spent time with Paul and the new um, head of reserves, Julian Bendel, at Rowland Wood at our nature reserve to make sure that, you know, these new members of staff know our reserve and why it's important um, and what work's been going on there. Um, so that's been positive. I've met them too and, you know, seems, seems to be um, going okay. We've had a few issues with, the, uh, forest, with Forestry England and uh, the Royal Payments Agency who aren't the uh, easiest to work with, but we hope that uh, the, man the sort of management of the reserve will continue and um, uh, Neil did a fantastic job last um, winter leading work parties at the reserve and he's doing that again this year there's um, another 12 work parties this year that are on our website the information's all there so if anybody is interested in doing practical uh, conservation the more the merrier we always need people out at Roland Wood um, helping us manage those sites um, for the butterflies um, also quite a lot of my time was taken up with closer engagement with the national charity since the pandemic um, they've kind of they've had staff turnover and they've um, sort of realized the benefits of working more closely with the branches so they um, have been trying to connect with committee members more and also to help facilitate better um, interaction between committees um, from different branches so that we can support each other <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, for example, there's now um, an all chairs meeting every two months, an online meeting. If you want to go um, and catch up with other chairs and get updates from the national team, there's um, you get updates from finance and membership and communications. There's been other meetings set up specifically around 
um, particular topics like membership. So it does seem that um, one of the benefits of the pandemic, I guess, was this on, there is now more online opportunity to work with other branches and to work with the national team um, and get updates from them rather than having to travel to um, Dorset, which is what we used to have to do to, to sort of get training and things like that. Um, and there is more, um, they, they're bringing out a programme of training for um, volunteers and committee members involved in branches on various different things. Um, so they definitely are providing more support um, than they used to, I think. Um, they also, BC, hopefully you know, launched um, a new strategy last year, um, Saving Butterflies and Moths. Um, it contains um, three strategic goals. Um, and they've been running various um, online workshops to discuss how branches can contribute. Um, and um, I've been attending a few things and so have some of the other committee members to try and make sure that Sussex is, um, you know, sharing in, sharing in trying to achieve these quite ambitious goals um, and to make sure that they reflect what's needed in our county um, and the things that we think as a branch are important. Uh, the species we think are important, the landscapes we think are important. Um, it is still definitely a work in progress. Um, so I think there will be more activity coming out from the national charity on, on all of these. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be as involved um, for the, the foreseeable future because I am stepping down as chair um, today due to having a baby in uh, February. <laughs> So I, I already was slightly struggling in terms of my availability um, to the branch work, working full time. And I, I just don't think it's very realistic um, to have a baby and run a branch at the same time. So I'm very sad to be stepping down. I've really enjoyed um, my sort of, I think it's been four years. I feel like the last few years have been a bit of a blur, <laughs> but, um, but I have really enjoyed it. But we do... I think we do need someone who can commit a bit more time and energy into sort of um, driving some projects forward and supporting the rest of the committee and kind of making the most of these strategic goals. Um, we, we haven't found someone to replace me yet, but the um, national charity are being really supportive. They've, um, we've found someone to, who's going to be a sort of volunteer um, Look, person who looks for volunteers basically <laughs> um, and she's got specialism in that area and she um, and they've also know um, this has this has happened to other branches before so the branch can still continue without a chair there's process for that we'll make sure that activities still happen um, unfortunately I'm not the only person stepping down Tim is also stepping down after how many years <laughs> Of quite a few, I was seven years, six or seven years as our secretary. Um, so we're also looking for a secretary. If anybody's um, interested, that's a that's a more straightforward role. It's um, basically uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's mostly taking minutes and org organising meetings, basically, and making sure that the national charity has the correct information about the branch um, that it needs. It's very simple. Exactly. But we also need a chair, Tim, so, you know. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, so, um, and, and unfortunately, we also had to say goodbye to B Lewis, who was our events coordinator the past two years. She came in um, during the pandemic and did a really good job of um, getting some events going at a very challenging time with lots of changing rules and restrictions and things. So the fact that we even ran events was really positive and I just was so grateful for the um, for doing that um, so those are the three main roles that we're looking for in terms of, of the committee so if anybody's interested or knows someone who might be interested um, please point them our way there's also on the um, national website there's a volunteer search facility where you can search for volunteer opportunities and all the roles and their descriptions are available on there um, but as I said um, the 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 branch will still continue. There's there's um, a process for that, so um, no one has to worry worry about that. Um, yeah. So I just mainly want to. I, I, there's more to talk about in terms of some of the conservation work we've done this year, but that will be covered in the talk 
um, that I'm doing this afternoon a bit later. Um, so really, I just want to say thank you to all the committee that have worked really hard this year to support me and support the branch. Um, <clears throat> and also the other volunteers who are not on the committee but do really important things like um, Sue, who um, man man manages the branch inbox, um, Paul, who's looking after the website, who's here, so I've actually met in person for the first time, which is amazing. Thank you very much, Paul. And um, Martin, who many of you know, manning the sightings page. Um, they all do really hard work behind the scenes that and not people often don't realise, so I just have to say thank you because uh, we couldn't do anything without them, really. Um, so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the summary. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but if... Uh, or after this, uh, another time, you can just come and chat to me. Or, me. or Tim, or one of the other committee members. I have a question. Yes. Tim, um, Jessie's pregnant and the baby, what's your excuse? <laughs> 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 I'm sure. <that laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, you just I need a break. It's 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 a, it's a comic yeah. time. I have to. Yeah, I have to say, Tim is, is still very much involved in the branch, and you're, I don't think you're going to stop uh, caring about butterflies, are you? So. No, I have a lot to do in that, in that, uh, in that realm. But exactly. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't want to pet the minutes anymore, really. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Someone else can have a go. Yeah, it's only so much you really want to do about it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right, so that's, that's that for the report. The next uh, thing, I think is oh yeah that's just to say the roles that we really need um and the next thing is the finance report so colin let's see if we can do this there you are thank you i'll just put on the next slide right so um the first person to speak after jess so formally i'd like to say thank you very much uh, for everything you've done for the branch as a chair um, particularly for me, when I started the role as treasurer, you handed over the treasurer's role to me in, in a very good state, and there's nothing more you could wish for than that, so thank you very much. Um, it's been a really difficult few years for everybody, and you've done a great job. Um, so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. These are the <coughs> um, a summary of the accounts that appear in the newsletter, which you haven't yet seen. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to give you an overview. Um, some of the details are up there. If you've got any questions, then please do come and ask. Um, about the details, we can certainly go through that, and they, that's exactly the format that's in the account, so you will see those coming through to you in due course once the post gets back up to speed. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick summary. These are all, have all already been audited by the National um, Organisation Headquarters, so all of our accounts for the last few years have been audited, uh, have been managed and audited centrally. Um, so we no longer have to formally adopt them as a branch, it's really just kind of reporting the status of the accounts. Um, as the newsletter, as once you see that, will describe, this year obviously was the first after the most sort of significant pandemic restri restrictions have been lifted for the branch, um, and, and as such it, it saw a, a limited return to some of the normal activities that we'd expect uh, around conservation and fundraising, um, although these were lower than we'd normally see. Um, but there were some signs of a return to normal um, uh, beginning to show. In the previous year, um, obviously, that was so heavily impacted. We made a significant branch contribution to national funding for staff and infrastructure. That was £20,000, if you remember from uh, last, last year's report. Um, but it did leave our uh, funds in a, still a very good state with about £25,000 in reserve at the beginning of the year. Um, so we, but, and, and within that, we managed to retain funds to cover the work that we'd planned, conservation work that we'd planned at Deep Dean, um, at our reserve at Park Corner Heath and Rowland Wood, um, and uh, the donations that we receive as a branch and, and manage as a branch for the Warn and Butterfly project, um, as well as some additional funds, obviously, to cover any other activities and expenses that we have. So, an overview of the income and expenditure for the year is as follows. So, income for the year was up over £700 from the previous 12 months in total. Um, mem membership subscriptions were the same as last year, but donations went up. So in total, we re received £9,448 as income for the year. Um, expenditure was up significantly, 
from last year. Um, that was mainly due to the contribution made by the branch of just over five and a half thousand pounds towards the cost of fencing for grazing ponies at Deep Dean and at Udean. Um, to great success, I think. Um, match funding for, these, uh, for this was found uh, with cooperation with Tim's liaison with the South Downs National Park Authority and, and has, has made a really big difference there. Um, Rosie, my daughter, and I have been there quite a few times this year. She's doing a school project there and um, we're really pleased to see the results of that, that um, uh, um, uh, contribution that we've made. Um, obviously, as well, that in particular will continue to pro provide benefits for years to come. Further costs were, in, were incurred for waste clearance at Roland Wood. You may remember that we had the old shed there that fell down in a, in a strong breeze one day. Um, and we had a, a sort of work party with committee members and other people um, clearing all of that up, tidying it up and then clearing the waste away. Uh, so we, we paid for some of that waste disposal where it wasn't suitable to, to leave on site. Um, and we also funded some field equipment and that totaled just over £1,000. Uh, membership fees, um, sorry, expenses, um, publishing costs, administration, tax and insurance in total were £4,894. The substantial chunk of that is production um, of the newsletter and annual report, from sort of publication and postage costs for those. Um, and our total expenses um, were, were £11,608, um, which was higher than our income. Uh, and it resulted in a reduction of the branch reserves for the year of £2,160. So overall, our um, branch financial position is still very healthy. Uh, we have a closing balance at year end of £23,784. Um, as I said earlier, we're no longer required to vote uh, at, at the AGM to adopt the branch accounts as they're now managed and audited at the national level. And therefore, this concludes my Treasurer's report. Thank you. to avoid the cable um right so then the main bit is that we actually have to do is elect committee members um so the branch guidelines require that one third of existing members of the committee um offer themselves for re-election every three years but we've all been elected because uh, the committee is quite small right now we've actually all been elected in the last three years so um I don't think we actually need to re-elect anyone <laughs> this year. But what we do need to do is officially elect Kevin uh, to the committee um, as membership secretary. Um, so if anybody would be willing to nominate Kevin? Tim can I think you can, yeah. Tim can do that. And then if anyone wants to second it, Colin can do that. And, and then um, if everybody, uh, people approve that, say yay. <laughs> Uh, anybody against? <laughs> no. Any abstain abstentions? No. Brilliant. Yay! You're there, Kevin. <laughs> um, and then also, um, we need to do the same um, for Simone as a post holder. So she's not going to be on the committee, um, but as a post holder, we still like to um, elect people officially. Um, so, can, does anyone want to nominate Simone? Colin. Colin. Anyone want to second it? Bob. Uh, and then everyone who's for it? Yeah. Anyone against it? Any abstentions? Should be able to get... No. Brilliant. Okay. So that is um, that. Uh, so I think, uh, unless anyone has any questions, I can close the AGM. Is there any... any I don't think so. Any other business? Anything anyone wants to say? No, brilliant. So I'm gonna formally close it at whatever, five past two.